Greetings and salutations, all I.A. Sanderson here once again, and today I'm going to do a book tag. Yes, I am going to do the ultimate book tag. That's not a build-up, that's actually what it's called. This tag originally started on Goodreads. Um, I'm not exactly sure who or what group started it and why. I can tell you for sure that I was tagged to do it by Brief O'Shea, so I'll leave a uh, link to her video down below in the description where she tags me, so thank you, Brief O'Shea, for tagging me. Okay, so let's start off with the first question. Do you get sick while reading in the car? Unfortunately, I'd have to say yes, I do. That's kind of a, not a good thing. I haven't really done it in a long time. I mean, I tried it once or twice when I was a child, and I got sick when I did that. I haven't tried to do it since, but uh, usually the trips in which I would read are kind of long, and I wouldn't want to be sick during a long trip, so I haven't really tried it. But... As far as I know, yes, I do get sick while reading in the car, which kind of sucks because I can't read. Which author's writing style is completely unique to you and why? See, I'm not exactly sure what this question is about. Um, does it mean uh, un unique to me that I've never seen before or one that is most like me? An author that's different from any other style I've ever seen before would be Ellen Hopkins author of the Crank series, and she writes in prose, so that's definitely unique as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the author that I would say is most like me, if that's what the question about, is I would say Rick Riordan, author of Percy Jackson and also the Kane Chronicles. Okay, so the next question is, Harry Potter series are the... Tw <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I've composed myself. So. Oh, okay. All joking aside, I mean, Twilight, I mean, it does have its place. It is, I guess, it has accomplished a lot. I mean, a lot of people have tried to emulate it. It has sold a lot of stuff. But comparing it to Harry Potter, seriously, three points? I got three points, really. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, <laughs> main characters are a lot easier to get behind. Uh, the story is a lot more complex, a lot more complicated, a lot more stuff happens in it. Uh, there's not this insistent rambling on about how cute Edward is or how cute any character is. Uh, just better written. The climax doesn't disappoint. Uh, yes, there actually is a final battle. Uh, really, there's just, there's just way too much stuff to go into. I mean, really, it's just like... <laughs> Really? Do you carry a book bag? And if so, what is in it besides books? That would be a no. If it doesn't fit in my pocket, I don't need it. Do you smell your books? Uh, why, yes, because if I go around smelling books, that wouldn't be creepy at all, now would it? No, I don't smell my books. Books with or without little illustrations? I don't know, it's not really that emotional a question for me. I don't really, um, not partial either way, so I look at it completely from a marketing standpoint. If it is geared towards a younger audience, uh, like children's book or maybe middle grade, then maybe it should have some little illustrations in it. But if it's an adult book, then no, I don't think it should be. So I just look at it from a marketing standpoint of view. What book did you love while reading but discovered later it wasn't quality writing? I don't think I've ever really had this experience with a book, per se. I mean, while I'm reading it, if it's not good quality, I can figure it out while I'm reading it. I have had that experience several times with movies and especially TV shows like Glee. Apparently, I'm not supposed to like that for some reason. I'm not supposed to like uh, the Sleepy Hollow show that's on there. I'm not supposed to like a lot of shows. I'm like, what? And there's a lot of movies that I like that apparently I wasn't supposed to like. You know, personally, I don't really care if other people think it's good or not, but as far as books are concerned, no, I don't think I've ever read a book that I thought that I enjoyed reading it, but later on realized that it was bad quality. I mean, there's a couple that I knew were bad quality while I was reading them. I mean, Fifty Shades of Grey, obviously I knew that was pretty bad, but I mean, I still had fun listening to it, or reading it, listening to it, because it was an audiobook, I should say. Do you have any funny stories involving books from your childhood? 
got plenty of funny stories from my childhood, plenty of funny stories from all parts of my life, really, but I don't think there's any funny stories that involve books. I do have a friend that started crying while reading my book in the middle of Subway, so that's kind of a funny story that involves books, it involves one of my books. I mean, personally, I found it flattering that she would get that emotionally involved in one of my stories that she would start crying in the middle of a subway. But as far as, you know, funny stories go, nope, I don't have any funny stories involving books. Sorry. What is the thinnest book on your shelf? That would definitely be Rape Girl by Alina Klein. Yes, it's about that thick. Yeah, only 125 odd pages, so yeah, that's pretty thin. What is the thickest book on your shelf? That would definitely be The Stand by Stephen King. Yes, yeah, so over a thousand pages. Check out that monster. I do have some pretty thick books on my shelf as well, but this is definitely the thickest. I compared it to uh, Dance with Dragons. That had almost as many pages and were pretty big, but this one, the print is a lot smaller than a Dance with Dragons. So, yeah, this is the thickest book I got on my shelf. Do you write as well as read? Do you see yourself in the future as being an author? When did you get into reading? That's kind of a difficult question to answer. I mean, I've been reading for an awfully long time. I think when I first actually got into reading when I was very young, I was like in fifth grade, um, you know, I was very adamant against reading up until that point. I mean, I didn't see the point of it because, you know, there was this great thing called television. I could just see what's on the screen and just sit there and veg and not have to think about anything. But when I was in fifth grade, my teachers got me a uh, got me a tutor for English studies, basically, and you know she helped me with some other things too. But uh, basically, she got me a uh, she got me a book on mythology. Actually, yes, it was a big picture book, uh, Dolores Dolores's book on Greek myths, I believe it was. Yeah, and um, and then we would read the Greek myths from that stuff, and I was just obviously I was pretty fascinated by them because I'm still writing about it to this very day. So I think fifth grade, that's when I actually started to get into it, but it didn't really take hold till I was about, till I was much older. When I got into middle school and my uncle gave me a set of books, uh, gave me the Dragonlance books by TSR, the company, not any, you know, TSR Elliot or anybody like that. But yeah, I got into the TSR novels and would start reading high fantasy stuff. And then I got out of it for a while and then my mother got, into it by you know saying oh you should read this thing it's called Harry Potter you know it's got so controversial but it's really good you know they go around shopping for stuff and but I read Harry Potter and I've uh, been reading quite avidly ever since what is your favorite classic book To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee definitely my favorite classic um, I don't really like most of the classics to be honest with you there's a few that I do like but uh, To Kill a Mockingbird I definitely like that one a lot in school, was your best subject reading, writing, slash language arts, English? Hmm. <laughs> I didn't really pay too much attention in school on most subjects. I think for the most part my best was science because that had a, uh, that had a written out plan. You know, I liked the experiments, you know, do this, do this, do this, and tell me what you get. So I was like, oh, okay, mix these chemicals together and this happens. So for the most part, science was my best subject. Um, later on, when I did decide that I did want to be an author and I did want to be a writer, I suddenly became a lot better at English. I started paying attention more in English. Um, one of the problems I had as an English student was that I wasn't afraid to sp wasn't afraid to speak my mind about you know my opinions on things and a lot of the classics I didn't like. I was just like. Why exactly are we reading this? Why exactly are we supposed to get it? I mean, the characters are boring, they're stupid, and even if they were written well, I couldn't get in behind them because they're just so morally inept as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, when you're in English, you know, you're supposed to like this. You're, this is a good book. You're not supposed to read those other stupid books that you like. No, you're supposed to like this stuff. You know, read this. This one is good. And I would disagree with that, and it would cause me problems. So, yeah, basically I would say my best subject in school, per se, was uh, probably science, just because that had a written-out procedure, and 
nothing really I could argue on. It was just, you know, memorize facts and regurgitate them. Uh, later on in college, though, of course, I did uh, study English. I got a degree in creative writing and journalism. So, yeah, that was how it was in college. But before that, I think my best subject would have been science. If you were given a book as a present that you have read before and hated, what would you do? That's kind of a difficult question for me. See, the people who buy me gifts, they usually are very uh, diligent in their research and, you know, they ask me, they know what I'm doing with my life and, you know, they'll, you know, they won't buy me anything unless I specifically say I need this or I want this or if they know it's something that I need that I don't know that I need. So if one of these people were to buy me a book that I didn't like, uh, chances are they knew I didn't like it. I would be like, and I would ask them, seriously, why did you buy this for me? You should have known better than this. I mean, I know that may sound callous on my part, but like I said, I mean, the people who usually buy me gifts or buy me presents, they usually are quite good about knowing what I like and what I need before buying me stuff. And... Yeah, they do their research, so <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's a very funny gag gift to buy me a book I didn't ask for. So now if I had people that just bought me stuff out of nowhere for no reason and something like that happened, then I'd probably just be like, oh, yes, I love this. Oh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> uh, as soon as they weren't looking. But, uh, but for the most part, uh, I would probably call them out on it. What is a lesser known series that you know of similar to Harry Potter or The Hunger Games? This is a pretty tough one. Um, I mean, everybody knows about a whole bunch of series out there that are similar to Harry Potter. Certainly a lot of stuff. There's certainly a lot of dystopian novels out there. One series I'll bring up that is probably known to not too many people because this is an independently published series is the Elemental series by Shauna Granger. Uh, no relation to Hermione, as far as I know, but this is a pretty interesting series. Uh, it deals with a group of uh, teenagers that are happen to be witches. Uh, a lot more real-world type witchcraft as opposed to Harry Potter made-up stuff, but I mean, there is still quite a bit of it made up, but it's rooted a little bit more in traditional witchcraft philosophy. Uh, definitely want to, definitely think you should check this out. I mean, they're pretty thin books, but yeah, the Elemental series by Sean Granger. As far as uh, divert, or excuse me, Hunger Games goes, <laughs> something similar to it, but lesser known. I mean, I could always bring up this one, but that would be kind of dickish of me. But uh, there's a lot of different, uh, you know, dystopian novels out there, dystopian series is there that you can get into. That's kind of like the Hunger Games. But um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend. Uh, Battle Royale or the Elemental series, if you want something similar to those books. What is a bad habit you always do besides ramble while filming? I've noticed that I tend to use the word yes and okay a lot. Sometimes I'll use that to punctuate things that I say, or, you know, like the pizza making video that I did, I noticed every time, you know, I'd, after every cut, I would say yes or okay or something like that. So I do tend to do that a lot. Um, there's actually several other things, but thanks to the magic glow of editing, you'll never see them. <laughs> what is your favorite word? Requiem. <laughs> it looks cool, sounds cool, it's a lot of fun to say. Yeah, I mean, the definition is a little bit somber, but I just love that. Requiem. Are you a nerd, a dork, or a dweeb? Or all of the above? I prefer the term geek myself. Vampires or fairies? Well, that's, that's a bit of a difficult one. Uh, you can do a lot with vampires. You can do a lot with fairies. Uh, fairies tend to be a little bit more rooted in mythology than vampires do, although there is a mythology to vampires as well. I don't know. I would say, as far as good stories goes, I think there's a lot more good vampire stories than good fairy stories. But there are good fairy stories, too. So, vampires, fairies... Either or is fine with me. Shapeshifters or angels? I don't know. Neither one of those interests, interests me all that greatly. I think I'll just say angels because everybody else said shapeshifters. Spirits or werewolves? I would have to say werewolves. I mean, spirits is... If you're talking about ghosts, there's a lot you can do with spirits. 
Uh, you can go into their background and all these things. But as far as uh, compared to werewolves, I, I like werewolves a lot better because werewolves, I mean, they're part human. They're a lot more relatable. I mean, we can all relate to that urge to, you know, let something primal out of us, I think. And, you know, there's different, there's different things you can do with werewolves as far as, you know, how they operate, how they, fit, how they work physically. You know, there's that whole pack mentality. So I would say, yeah, werewolves. Zombies or vampires? Ah, uh, vampires, definitely. I mean, vampires, they're allowed to have personalities. They're allowed to have organized societies. They can be loners if they want. They can be mysterious. They can have human emotions if they want. There's a lot you can do with vampires. Zombies, it's pretty much just how easily is it for them to turn other people into zombies? Is there any explanation at all as to where they came from? And are they slow or are they fast? And that's pretty much about it. I mean, there's a lot of different things you could do as far as how the society deals with zombies, but most people just choose, okay, yeah, the, the zombies destroy society and they take over and there's just a few survivors, you know, out there struggling to survive against it when, you know, there's actually so many other things that you could do. I mean, I would like to see a story where the zombies, they only take, like, over half the country and the other half of the country manages to remain, you know, the way it is. Or, you know, a section of the world is cut off by zombies and all that stuff like that. I mean, I guess a couple of people have done that, and there's, like, pockets of humanity. But basically, no. As far as story goes, I'd say vampires are way better. Love triangle or forbidden love? I mean, to be honest, they both have potential. They both have, you know, a certain amount of tension, whether it's from, you know, society telling people, no, you can't do this, or... <laughs> Whether it's, you know, a third person, you know, this person, this person, you know, the pros and cons of each. I mean, I think a lot of people are choosing Forbidden Romance because lately love triangles have been overdone in a lot of the YA stories. But, I don't know, as far as which one do I think is better, I mean, I mean it all comes down to, you know, how well are they done. Which one would I prefer? Not really something that I would care about either way. But if I had to choose, I would say, I guess I would choose Forbidden Romance instead because, I don't know. Full-on romance books or action-packed with a few love scenes mixed in? Gee, I wonder how I'm going to answer this. Hmm. Yeah, to me, romances, they're really not interesting enough to base an entire story around them to be the main plot of the story. I mean, relationships, I mean, when you, have you ever noticed that when you uh, go to somebody's wedding and you don't know how they met, you want to ask them, well, how did you two meet, um, when did you start dating or all that stuff, and then they answer that question, and to you it's pretty anticlimactic. I mean, like I said, to me, romances, they're just not interesting enough to be the main focus of a story. Now, I mean, they can be very good subplots, if done right. I mean, they can create a certain amount of tension, like a guy has to go out and save the world, but he falls in love with this girl, and then he has to choose, you know, do I choose the love of my life, or do I choose saving the world, or do I choose between, you know, the person I love and, you know, my dreams, or this person, or, you know, what I actually have to get done, because if I don't get things done, you know, really bad consequences are going to happen, but what about my happiness? So yeah, romantic subplots can be good if well done, but as far as basing a whole story around a romance, I guess there's some people that can pull it off. I mean, not my personal preference, but I just don't see those as, you know, main plot materials. And yes, I am a guy. And so that was the ultimate book tag. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, I will tag a couple people. I will tag uh, Diana Miller. And I'll also tag uh, Jenny from Jellyfly. So thank you once again to Brief O'Shea for tagging me for this. And as always, my pertinent contact information will be down below in the abyss. Please comment, rate, subscribe. You know the drill. And until next time, this is Isaac Anderson telling everybody, make your lives grand and have a good day. Thank you very much.